All right, let's take a look at nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so when benzenes have a good leaving group, they may be substituted with a good nucleophile. Ideally, obviously, you want your nucleophile to be a better nucleophile than your leaving group. Otherwise, you set up reversible conditions. So we will uh, pay attention to that um, as we do examples in class and so forth. Uh, but in general, we'll just say here's our nucleophile. We'll make it a good nucleophile, negatively charged. Doesn't have to be, but again, you just want it to be better than your um, leaving group. Now, as we attack this benzene, it's a very difficult attack because you have a um, aromatic ring that you're trying to disrupt the aromaticity. So the first step is the rate limiting step, and we set up resonance in this intermediate. So very slow first step. And we can draw the first contributor here, having an anion here in the ortho position. And at the carbon that was attacked, we're going to have our leaving group, and we're going to have our nucleophile. Okay, from there we can resonate through a couple of contributors, sending this negative charge to the para position in the second contributor. Again, resonance contributors aren't real. They are uh, representations of the hybrid where we average all of them together to get the hybrid structure that is closer to the real structure that would be predicted by molecular orbital theory. Um, but we can get pretty close here with our contributors. We can have a lot of explanatory power with these contributors as well, why we use them. So our third contributor sends us here to the um, ortho position on the other side. And then finally, uh, from this position, we could say that we kick off the leaving group. We could have equivalently just turned back around and kicked the leaving group off from the first contributor if we're showing it a mechanism, but to demonstrate the resonance contributors, we went ahead and drew all three. Um, now, for our nucleophile, the first, what we could do is we could use hydroxide, so that's what we've drawn here. Okay, but any good nucleophile will do. And we kick off our leaving group. Now I do have the bonds here in the opposite orientation as our mechanism would have predicted, but remember because we have an aromatic ring, this resonance has also developed, so it is the same uh, structure. So don't let that bother you here. We've got that set up. And then again, we've kicked off our leaving group byproduct. All right. Now this is a very difficult reaction. So it requires extreme conditions. Um, and even substituted benzenes can um, require extreme conditions. So how do we help this? We activate nucleophilic aromatic substitution by the presence of electron withdrawing groups. So that's exactly the opposite is electrophilic substitution. But remember, negative charge buildup is stabilized by positive charge. So if we're talking about rate of reaction, um, the most extreme conditions, so higher temperature, longer reaction times, and that goes with reaction barrier. So we'll say we're slower reaction on the left. Um, and then we move to the right here, and this is the fastest reaction and less extreme conditions. So what's going on here? So NO2 we would list um, as a group and I'll not the nitronium ion but here we'll just list it as a group. We call this a um, strong withdrawing group. And so it is highly activating um, towards nucleophilic substitution is less, or it's highly deactivating towards electrophilic substitution. Um, so why is when it's in the meta position, is it less stabilizing than the para? So this is, uh, as far as stabilization goes, um, the most stable, fastest reactions on the right hand structure. And so the reason is, is because when we attack this with our nucleophile, there's a place for the electrons to go to the most stable 
atom, the most electronegative atom, as our most um, or our, our highest contributing resonance contributor, our most stable and most important resonance contributor is generated directly by this attack. And so we could just show those electrons going straight to oxygen um, after the attack. From there, that's a lower reaction barrier to get to that rate limiting step, that intermediate, regain aromaticity, and kick off that leaving group. So it um, facilitates the formation of that first intermediate and accelerates the reaction, making it um, faster and, and able to be conducted under less extreme conditions. If we look at the meta position substitution, it does sigma withdrawal from the ring, puts a delta plus in this ring, makes the ring more attractive to the nucleophile. But it doesn't make it easier to get through that initial barrier because the nitro group in the molecular orbitals sits at a node in the highest occupied molecular orbital. That's the way MO theory would, or at least a region of lower electron density, um, would explain it. By resonance, we can look at this and see that there's no way for me to send those electrons into the ring. Okay, I've got to clear this bond because carbon can only make four bonds and I do so by resonating around the ring. I can't resonate up into the nitro group from um, this structure. Okay, so it's a little bit less um, stabilizing. It's somewhat stabilizing like we said, but not as much. Here we have a delta plus in the ring attractive to the nucleophile and we're able to, to send those electrons to an electronegative atom thus lowering the reaction barrier even more. Okay, so ortho and para substituted um, groups are going to be better for us, but all withdrawing groups are going to activate nucleophilic substitution. Ortho and para substituted, so here, here, and here, will accelerate more. All right, so let's look at our groups again, um, our electron donating groups. We start with our strong donators, then our moderate donators, and then our weak donators. All of these we would consider to be deactivating to nucleophilic aromatic substitution. We call them activating before to electrophilic aromatic substitution. Okay, it's opposite. Opposite charges, the group effects are opposite. Moving on to our withdrawing groups, just so you can take a look at these one more time. We've got our um, weak withdrawing groups. We've got our moderate withdrawing groups. And we've got our strongly withdrawing groups. These are all activators to nucleophilic aromatic substitution and deactivators to electrophilic aromatic substitution. All right, so as we saw, the nitro group very strongly activating towards our nucleophilic substitution. Okay, so ultimately, I want you obviously to be able to predict the products of nucleophilic aromatic substitution reaction. That's as simple as identifying the nucleophile and replacing the leaving group. Um, but given our knowledge of withdrawing and donating groups, I want you to be able to rank the relative ease of nucleophilic substitution, just like we did for electrophilic substitution um, for several structures that you may be given that are related to one another, rather than memorizing conditions, 300 degrees, 200 degrees, um, 15 degrees. The conditions are highly variable for any, re any substituted benzene a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So it doesn't benefit us to memorize them, but what we can do is learn how to recognize ones that will be more easily substituted than others. So say I said give these a number with one being the mildest conditions, 
and three being the most extreme that would be required and rank these out. So the easiest, the mildest would be the para substituted uh, followed by the meta substituted which isn't given the benefit of sigma and pi withdrawing. It's only given the benefit of sigma withdrawing so it would be next, still faster. Then the most extreme would be just bromobenzene with no other activating groups. Okay, so that's how we would rank those out and that's the kind of expectations I have as far as reaction conditions and then to be able to predict the products of nucleophilic aromatic substitution.